Hey, so this is going to be another one of those rapid fire videos that I talked about where we just uh, go over a quick little technique for reserving space on the UV map for future editions. Uh, this seems obvious, but uh, it only occurred to me uh, just a little while ago. So uh, you might find it useful. Uh, and at the end, we're going to talk about a plugin for Modo uh, that gives you a new primitive type called the Spiraloid, which has proved to be really useful for me. So let's get to it. So the basic problem that I want to talk about is, let's say you've built all these little uh, little pieces over here, and you've packed them beautifully onto a UV map, uh, hopefully using I pack that. And you know, the, uh, your art director comes along and says, "Hey, let's add like one more little piece, or let's add some floater geometry that we can stick on on top of these pieces, you know, to make some optional detail." Uh, the problem is, you've pretty much you maximized your UV space, which is normally a good thing, but in this case it wouldn't be because you'd have to add the new pieces and repack the UVs and then you know, either transfer the maps over somehow or uh, redo the texturing or whatever. So the super simple solution is this. So the way that I account for that situation is this. If you look at your existing pieces and you figure out how much space you want to reserve on that UV map. So I'm going to make a new uh, new plane object here and just pull it out, say about that big. That represents the amount of reserve space that I want to have on the UV map. Now you can see how it's sized relatively to the other pieces. So it's about the same size as this round piece here. So that's about how much I want to hold and reserve. Now obviously the UVs aren't set up correctly. So if I do an auto pack on this, uh, you can see that that piece now slots right in there. So what I'll do then, uh, and I won't demonstrate it now because it's fairly obvious, but you just shoot this out to I pack that, pack this mesh, pull it back, then select that quad you you dropped in there and delete it. Um, now you'll have an optimally packed mesh with a reserve area right where that quad was. So if you need to you know, expand in the future, uh, you've got room to do that. Yeah, and that's the whole tip, you know, really simple and straightforward, but it, you know, it can save your ass if you're not a hundred percent sure that you're done with the mesh. So the plugin I wanted to feature today uh, is a native C++ plugin that's available on the Foundry forums and I'll link the thread in the video description. Uh, he's got installers for Moto 8, 9, and 10, so you should be able to get a version that works for you. Uh, this has been super handy for me when it comes to various uh, various hard surface stuff that I've been doing. So uh, installation is super simple. You drag it into the viewport, you restart Moto, and you've got a new button on your viewport or your, your, your Moto window called Spiraloid. So if I activate it, you see those parameters over here. If I drag it out, there's the new primitive. Now it is what it says on the tin. There's a spiral of geometry. And if you've been modeling hard surface stuff for a while, you can probably think of a few uses for that. But, but we'll do the obvious one uh, right now for demonstration purposes, which is a screw thread. So um, let's give it a height. Let's give it like a meter high. This is a large screw head. And you can see here, there's two radiuses, right? Uh, one is the bottom and one is the top. So let's give it uh, making them both the same basically makes a cylinder uh, with an offset loop, uh, which is how most of the tutorials online tell you to make a screw thread. Uh, but here it's built into this primitive, which is super great. So we drag this up and you're pretty much done at this point. Uh, there's other parameters over here that I won't really get into right now, but you can experiment with it when you download it because uh, it's free. So why wouldn't you download it, right? So let me drop the tool. And now I just have this geometry sitting here. So let's say I grab this loop here, split it in the middle, grab that edge loop, push it out. You know, obviously you can see where the screw, th screw thread is going to come from, right? It's right here. So I throw some weight on it and there you go. You're just about ready to bake out. So that's, just, uh, that's all I wanted to show was just that that quick little plugin, you know, the best things are sometimes the smallest things. 
Thanks for watching.